In question two of our series, where we find the general formula for a Maclaurin series, we're asked, find the Maclaurin series for f of x is equal to e to the power of x, and find its radius of convergence. Recall that a Maclaurin series, the general formula, looks like this, where a is set equal to zero. And that's the fundamental difference between a Maclaurin series and a Taylor series. To find the general formula for the infinite series that represents our function, I need to evaluate e to the power of x at zero and its derivatives. So to organize my work, I'll create a chart, much like the way I did in question number one, and n will represent the number of derivatives. So zero represents the function itself without taking its derivative. One represents the first, second, and third. I'll stop right there. In my next column, I'll write down f subscript n, the derivative number, at x, and then in my last column I'll substitute 0 where I have x. So I have f subscript n at 0. So let's go ahead and find out what the functions are. Now if I have it at n is equal to 0, I'll simply write down e to the power of x. At n is equal to 1, we have the first derivative. And the first derivative of e to the power of x is still e to the power of x. And it turns out that no matter how many times you take the derivative of e to the power of x, you still get e to the power of x. Now substituting x is equal to 0 into each one of these will give you 1. So coming up with the general form is actually quite easy. To find out what f sub n at x is equal to, you look at the outputs and they're all 1. So you don't really need to come up with anything special. It's simply 1. And of course, if we match this to what the general formula looks like, I can replace this part, which I've set a is equal to 0 with, to 1. So I have 1 over n factorial x to the power of n. This right here represents the general formula for e to the power of x. Now the question also asks, find its radius of convergence. To find the radius of convergence, I'll be using the ratio test. And the ratio test is outlined below where I will take the limit as n approaches infinity for the following expression. And the top part here, we replace all the n's with n plus 1. So I have x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. And then I divide by the expression itself. So I'll divide it by x to the power of n over n factorial. Dividing two fractions, I flip the second fraction and change this sign to multiply, where I have the limit as n approaches infinity, the absolute of x to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial times n factorial over x to the power of n. Now, if you're familiar with the laws of exponents, and you should be, x to the power of n plus 1 is the same thing as saying x to the power of n and x to the power of 1. That means this x to the power of n and this one will cancel out. n plus 1 factorial, if we expand this, gives us n plus 1 times n factorial. This means that this n factorial and this one cancels out, leaving us with the limit as n approaches infinity for the absolute of what was left, x to the power of 1 over n plus 1. Now since we're taking the limit for n, we can separate this as a product. We have absolute of x times the limit as n approaches infinity for 1 over n plus 1. And substituting a very large number into the denominator here will give us eventually 0. So all of this goes to 0. 0 times the absolute of x is equal to 0. Now, according to the ratio test, if your answer is less than 1, the series converges. Therefore, we can conclude that the series here converges. And since that's the case, the radius of convergence is infinity. Normally, you would have a number being added or subtracted to x. And you can solve for x in that case, but that's not the case here. And so there you have it. That is how to find the general formula for Maclaurin series.